Good to be on the beach again, can I? Oh, mate, isn't it what? Long time between drinks. I haven't seen the beach this beautiful in a long time. It was great. The tide had been up high. There was plenty of hard sand. It was just a roll down the hill straight onto the beach. It was blowing offshore. There was a nice little ground swell, probably two to three foot. I was pumped to be back in my ute on the road filming again. It was good to be back. There's a couple of your mates out there on surfboards. Yeah, I think I might um, try and catch dinner before I go for a surf, mate. What do you reckon? <laughs> yeah, mate, I brought food. <laughs> hey, um, what's the idea of the disco, mate? Where's the Land Cruiser? Up on blocks? No, mate, I'm uh, just getting carried away with the crew. This is getting another modification before we sort of, you know, kick off filming again. Mate, the old disco didn't crowd last season and, you know, I'd, I'd love jumping in the driver's seat. It's time to get the cobwebs out of it, eh? No cobwebs in it. <laughs> I need to get out of this car and get a line in the water ASAP. Mate, I'll watch you. Not a bad spot to have a fish, mate. Did you invite the old fella? No, mate, he's, um, he's got into politics. Politics? Yeah, go to Canberra. The story I heard, he was going into prosthetics. Same thing, isn't it? I don't know. I can't believe he chose politics over this. Yeah, I don't understand it. Well, I suppose he's fighting so we can keep coming to places like this. Yeah, true. Can you imagine him in Parliament? That's where wear a tie. <laughs> imagine him parking, parking up Milo at the front of Parliament House. Chugging it on in there, smoke billowing everywhere. He'd have to have a driver. Oil leaking everywhere. <laughs> he's got some stiff competition this time round. Pauline Hanson's making a comeback. <laughs> That's true. Season two, Glenno. I'm excited. Where do you want to go, mate? Straight to WA. Oh, yeah, I know a couple of good spots over there. We'll have to get there to Tassie, too. No, 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 not this time of the year. No. What about Northern Territory? Oh, yeah. Bit of red dirt. Yeah. Ernie Dingo, what are you doing here? How did he get there? You'd know a thing or two about Australia, wouldn't you? Sure would, mate. You should come with us. Mate, this could be really good. We could, um, hey, 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 show hey, through hey, W. Hey, hang on. How do you know he's low range worthy? Oh, mate, uh, he might not even know what four wheel drive is. We've got to make sure he can get out of a bog hole. We've got to make sure he can cook, fish. Yeah. You know, make us breakfast, bacon eggs. Maybe we should do a few little tests. Ooh. Tests. Qualifying, you know. Mate, I'm pretty excited, but okay. Can't just drag anyone out in the bush and think they can be do the right thing. We've got to test him first. I suppose we are low rangers. Right, we'll put him through, put him through a rigorous low range test. What do you got in mind? Well, I've got a few things in mind, mate. We better get into it. In this game, Ernie, it's important to be able to catch your own dinner, mate. That includes fishing and all that sort of thing. So you know, you might learn a few things from me here. <laughs> what are you doing here anyway? Look at that, perfect cast. Bring that lure across the bank, catch anything here, all sorts of things. You know, you give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day. You teach a man how to fish and he'll eat for the rest of his life. You know, that lure's just working along beautifully there, this Stratic reel, Shimano, it's just beautiful, nice action. Oh, Nat, good idea, Ernie, I'll be needing that shortly. I'll have one soon. He's wasted his time on that one, I reckon. See that, Ernie, another perfect cast there, mate. Another perfect cast, just work it along the bank like that. Beautiful, this stratic reel. Just work it across the bank like that. Good action. You can feel the, the lure working on that sand. You know, even if you don't get a fish, it's worth it. Just being out here. You know, it's rewarding. You know, we can have steak for dinner if we like. Pretty sure that fish was uh, chasing my lure. Oh. Just happened that Ernie put the net in front of it before it grabbed hold of it. OK, Ernie, the most important test that there doesn't come from not eating. OK, you've been in a good paddock too. I certainly have, mate. I love to eat. You know what that is? That there yeah. is a hand. I know, but underneath. Oh, yeah, it's a Dutch oven. Yes. We cook in this. OK. And that there, and that there's food. What is that green stuff? Don't worry about That's it. That's a garnish. Garnish, how do you cook spring, garnish? Don't cook it, just sprinkle on top, make it look pretty. And then when we get it, we just flick it in the bush and eat what's under it. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll leave you two. We're going to grab a beer, mate. Good luck, mate. No probs. I got this.
Mate, we got him this time. He had yeah. no idea. I know. He's got no all the idea. right ingredients. Just needs know-how. Did <sighs> you bring you. spare food? Yeah, I did. Yep. <laughs> Barbecue shapes. Yeah. They, they changed the bloody biscuit. <laughs> Should we have brought that other food down? Or... Oh. Look at that. I hope you blokes are hungry. I'm halfway through, man. I can go one of yours. Hey, little fella, you want to get me a cake out of the angle? No worries, mate. This guy can cook. Yeah, no, Glenno, no, it's down, mate. Obviously, his first time four-wheel driving, Ernie. But what we've got to do is we've got to dig this thing out. But we don't want to dig a hole, we want to dig a car out of a hole. So, you know, being on low range, you need to know how to do these sorts of things, Ernie. So we'll give you a shovel, we'll give you a bit of a go at it, we'll give you a few pointers, you know, tell you what you're doing right, tell you what you're doing wrong. I'll go and get another shovel, we'll give you a hand, probably be here 45 minutes or so, we'll get this thing out of here. That thing's pretty high, Ken, I'll get it for you. Hey, this will put, a, this will put a sweat on his brow, I reckon. It's going to take a while to get this thing out. Yeah, it's just down. I know. Oh, this will sort him out, mate. She's mate, down. That's down big time. Four wheels to get out. It's yeah. going to take him a while, isn't it? Got it out, fellas. Mate, I reckon he passed. He's doing all right, eh? Hey, Kenno, I've got a short handle shovel here about your size, mate. <laughs> Sawing off shovel. <laughs> Turns out he's pretty good at recoveries as well. You blokes been here before, haven't you? Yes, episode one, season one. Yeah, this, the scientific aspects of it all, you got all that, haven't you? Yeah. There's an old story that goes along with this here where this um, young fellow had stole something very precious to his brother. He stole his wife. And his brother come looking for him. So he turned himself into a rainbow to hide in the sky. And his brother threw the boomerang Smashed the rainbow and it, this is where he landed. Must have been a good shot with the boomerang, splattered him everywhere. Yeah, that's the story about it. It's amazing. It's like kids in, in um, that play putty. Play doh, yeah. Play doh, yeah. You get all separate colours yeah. until they start mixing them together. It was great to hear a traditional story about the coloured sands up on Rainbow Beach. We'd heard the scientific version, but I think I like the traditional version better. Tell you what, it's like a cockpit in here. Flash. This is nice, this. Yeah. What's the point of going bush if you're going to take the city with you? You should see my other ring. I've got a coffee machine, microwave. You've got a coffee machine in your car. Yeah. Not in this microwave. one. In the 79 series, yeah. It's got the fridge, freezers, it's got the hot water system, it's got a sink, barbecue. Why? Well, I like coffee. Mm hmm. Like it have to be a bit posh to do this. I can't wait to take you out the bush to next to nothing. This one knows the bush. Just, just done the fink. Just been through uh, through the desert. On a horse with no name. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I said, he, he's a well well grounded guy. Really funny, witty. It was beautiful driving back on the beach, heading south. The sun was setting. There was like a, a wisp of smoke from a bushfire across the horizon. It was clean, crisp surf again. And where the tide had been receding, there was a nice mirror image all the way down the beach. It just mirrored the image of the sky and the horizon. It was just beautiful. Well, I thought I'd better not let the fish that I helped Ernie catch go to waste. A good teacher always rewards the student. Filleting a fish. Filleting a fish. You, you've done this before, obviously. Once or twice. Go in behind the head here. Yep. Behind the jawbone. Good on you. But the thing, yeah, I've always faced the blade away from you. Lift so your mate pops it, not you. Good old Kenno. He's, uh, he's a know it all when it comes to fish. Now slow down. I'm going to skin this one. Good on you. But I've got to give it to him. He, um, he knew how to fill it. He didn't waste anything. He, could, he skinned it very well. Look at that. You read your newspaper through that. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going to chunk it. Uh, uh, uh. Again, you look at the thing, cut it at an edge. Just get, take it down at about a 45 degree edge, all right? Cut it that way. Actually, what do you want in the pan with it? If we've got tomatoes and yeah, red onion. Yeah, dice up the tomatoes yeah. and red onion. Actually, who's cooking this? Me. You are? Yeah. All right. How much do you want, the full onion? Yes, please. Well, that should be enough, mate. Two tomatoes. 
Yeah, why not? That's a lot of butter. What are you stressing about? We got enough butter in there, you reckon, Ernie? I reckon we got, haven't got enough. You got any more? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, perfect. There you go. Oh. A bit of messing up there. A bit of me eye. You're lucky. Looking good, mate. What we should do now, good. just sort of seal the top on that. Let it, Let it simmer away for a little bit, simmer eh? Where was the lid you put from there? What happened to the camp? It might be around here. There we go, Ernie. It's all good, mate. You mongrel. <laughs> They're nice and warm now. I'm on to it. That'll do. OK. Oh, we've got a lid now. <laughs> <laughs> the taste of that fish. OMG. You guys hungry? Yeah. You look hungry. Oh, look at that. Now it didn't die. Mm. That's nice. Oh, is that enough? You want a bit more? No, no, this will do me, just in case I die. Not too much, mate. Yeah, just in case I die. You're a grown lad. <laughs> I know. I reserve the right to comment on the grounds that it may incriminate me. <laughs> That's gorgeous, is the word for that. Probably gorgeous. do without the fish scales, but. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's rustic. That's the rustic. Is, that was a nice rustic touch to that. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you outdone yourself. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, well, you caught it. I had to do something. Ernie can catch it. Ken can cook it. Glen I'll eat it. It's a match made in heaven. I wanted to go through with the guys a lot of suggestions from, from our audience. We've been getting a lot of emails from, from viewers on places to visit for season two. Nice. Josh Chittenden. He works on the Gun Barrel Highway. It's a great little spot called Carnegie Station. Yep, nice little spot there. You yeah, know, he's gone as far to say he's spoken to the owners and they're happy to have us visit there as well. Callum from WA, he's in the Navy. But the, the idea of his trip was to do as little bitumen as possible. He left the bitumen at a turn off from Caves Road onto Bob's Hollow Road in the southwest of Margs. I oh, said so that's yep. down in WA as well. That's down Margaret in River. Chop. Yeah, down Margaret River and Caves Road, yeah. Yep. Where'd he go? Huge list. Over the trip, he saw a vast array of scenery that you think all Aussie four drivers should see, including beaches, cliffs, carry tree, forest, lakes, fern tree gullies, river crossings, mud, pine forests, sand dunes, emus and wild horses out there too, he says. Yeah, well, they taste all right. <laughs> so we're going to WA. Here's another one. Drew from WA. I must. Visit spot for you guys to come to Western Australia, Don Dracastrio National Park. Did I say that right? I wouldn't know. How would I know? Don. I'm not from, I am from WA. <laughs> Appar apparently <laughs> you are. Yeah. Here's another one. Is it WA again? Tassie. No, Tassie. Tassie. Our ultimate to go to destination was Tassie. Uh, where'd they go? Looks like just travel from pub to pub, by the looks of it. Nice. Hell, just do that one. That sounds good. I think we need to look into some of those spots that people actually gave to us and actually go and have a look for ourselves. Some of these people have gone as far to give um, GPS markings, everything for really? where to turn. GPS marks, that's it. Yep, the they're the best. Goes left best there. Tracks. Well, guys, there's a heap of places out here our viewers want us to go, and we've always wanted to go to WA and Tassie. Well, I reckon we let Ernie take us on a bit of a trip, show us his country. Yep. Then we'll get over this side of the country. Exactly. Then we'll show you around. We'll return the favour. Job's mm. on. So, Keno, mate, uh, taking us on an adventure today. Where to, why, how, who? A uh, bit of surf and turf, mate. We've done the surf, or reef and beef. We're heading out to the country, mate. Kenilworth Homestead. There's a few nice tracks up the back in the forestry. We can have a bit of a play as well, mate. You been out there before, Ernie? No, mate, I'm a virgin. Uh, that's debatable. <laughs> <laughs> to Kenilworth, I meant. <laughs> we dropped the van off at the homestead before we hit the tracks into the state forest. We'd had a lot of bad weather up here in the last couple of weeks, so I thought it probably best we go and suss the tracks out first before I go dragging a little caravan through there. Lucky I did because we ended up climbing some gnarly hills. Yeah, the state forest, it was beautiful in there. Just after rain, everything was green. 
We're driving through the forest, obviously nature just comes alive. It's, it's beautiful, you know. We took the opportunity just to park our cars, turn the engines off and, ju and just take it in for a few minutes. The whip birds, uh, magpies, uh, just everything. It just feels like all the birds in Australia were in that one area at the same time and just all singing. I was actually surprised that the tracks weren't washed away. There was no water in the creek, so obviously we were quite elevated, so it ran away very quickly. But it was also a good test for Ernie. I didn't know whether he was uh, like an off-roader or more into just touring, but he was, he was very comfortable. Oh, Glenno, she looks a bit steep, mate. I'm glad we aired down. Um, I'm thinking rear locker, definitely. Um, might use, even use the front one if we need to. What happens if you don't have lockers? Uh, you need to press some of those spaceship buttons in the centre console there that says go uphill mode or something like that. It's steep Glenno and it looks uh, a bit slippery too, a bit of clay pack. And say after all that rain last weekend, would have been like a river coming down there. Heap of erosion humps too. Into it, can I? He's digging it. Lockers, mate? Yeah, mate. Rear air locker in. Oh, gee. Mate, you should have had a saddle on that. You'd have done good. <laughs> this hill doesn't stop. Just keeps going. Oh, crikey. It's lovely though, Glenno, you're gonna love it up here. It's like a pine tree enthusiast's dream. We'll call this Glenno Pine Hill. <laughs> the road tires on the disco, I was a little bit nervous going up these hills because they were quite steep. Just go for a look, Ernie. Yeah, mate, let's do it. See if the Land Rover's got what it takes, you know. No, I'm just looking, all this machine, uh, buttons and stuff here's gonna do it all for you. You just gotta steer, that's all. Mate, that's the generally the way it goes with this. A little bit tacky, so a little bit slippery in areas. So and you can see where bulldozers have been down and, and, and wash these big humps for your stop erosion. You could have bloody graded it out a little bit for us. Yeah. There's a few humpy bumpies in here and there, eh? Yeah, no. But the disco, with all its traction aids, just ate it up. It's been fun in the water, I tell you. Well, there you go, a bit of wheel spin. Steep ready to go, too, isn't it? Yeah. Look at those. Oh, pictures. look at this. It's beautiful up here. That's worth the photo, I tell you. Yeah. And once we got to the top of the hill, there was just pines everywhere. Hoop pines, I think they were. Yeah, just pine. Just give me pine. It's just that smell in the air. I love pine on the fire. Just give me a pine forest and green grass. Hey, Glenno, so do you notice anything different about my car, mate? Mate, you got new stickers on it? I do have a new sticker, yes. The uh, MDC sticker has changed. But there's something else, right? There is. There's something else. It's a new fishing rod, isn't it? Uh, I've got a couple of new fishing rods. Do they work? Do they work? No, come on, guys. There's something else. Something else new about my car. I know what it is. It's the first time I've seen it. <laughs> ah, I've got it. You've got a canopy on the back. I do, mate. We can throw stuff in the back of your ute now and it won't get wrecked. That's right, it won't get dirty, that's the plan. But there's something else. It's not just the canopy. Mate, you've got me. Oh, that's right. Hang on, Glenno. Put your colour-enhancing sunglasses on. I forgot you were colourblind. <laughs> Change the paint. <laughs> yeah, and I bet your missus told you to get a silver one to let someone else come first. <laughs> <laughs> There were some unbelievable hills. There was more going up than going down. Well, guys, didn't stay flat for long. Up we go again. There's a bit more traction, though. There's, like, rocks and stuff. Don't throw them back this way, then, mate. Oh, it gets steeper up here. All right, mate. Coming up now. 
And it gets bumpy. Oh yeah, definitely gets steeper, eh? Right. <laughs> See how those road tyres handle that. Mate, no slippage. It was constantly going up. We thought we were going to end up at the moon or something like that. It was crazy. Well, guys, I think I found a name for this track. The Never Ending Hill Track. Mate, we must be halfway to the moon. There's a few, a few nasty rock ledges, mate. Oh, he stopped. I'm rolling backwards. I'm going to throw in the locker. Rear locker. Uh, E-Locker did the trick there, mate. We're just going to quickly knock up a roll cage. <laughs> hey, Ernie, have you got something to hang on to, mate? Yeah, I'm hanging on to my hat, mate. <laughs> yeah, we kept going up and up and up. I thought we were going to be like spacemen and be floating around in the cars. Lockers, no, lockers here, mate. no problem at all for the disco. So what is it, Ernie? What what keeps you on the road, keeps you travelling? What what is it that draws you draws you to it? Like this spot here, mate, you can just sit back and enjoy it. I love this country that much that every time you stop and have a look at it and appreciate it for what it is, you try and see it from another little angle or maybe over the hill. But I'm... So you just keep travelling. What's in the windshield is a blessing. What about you, Glenno? I love discovering new places. I love to seeing how people live in different communities, different towns, what makes them love where they are and what they do. What I love about it is everywhere I go, the fish just seem to elude me. Is that a good thing? Keeps me coming back. <laughs> That's stubborn. I'm with you though, it's, the chase is more important than the catch. And from what I've been hearing, you've been doing a lot of chasing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not gonna stop. Oh, good on you. Well, it's been fun, Ernie. What do you reckon about tagging along on a few more? Well, I reckon you'll fit in well, mate. You blitzed the tests. Well, there you go. Tell you what. See you in a couple of weeks. I've got a really good feeling about travelling with this guy. Season two. season two. Welcome. We love you all. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's getting cold. <laughs> <laughs> it's pumped to be back in back in the. And um, just as a safety, guys, in the background up there is a little bit of fuel. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the bomb. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the worst. <laughs> he didn't smash it. He absolutely ab ab that word obliterated it. Beautiful. What sort of flour you use? Self-raising. No, get some rice flour. Just like I did with myself when I was growing up, self-raised myself. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you're a little bit of a flour, were you? Yeah. Pansy. <laughs> it's also very good at cigar. Uh, what's it called? It's also very good at Sudoku. 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 He's also a master of Sudoku. Suspended tent. Is that it? Sudoku? <laughs> you know, a uh, good teacher always, um, I don't know, go again. Hey, my 
Get me finger. I'm rolling. What happens when you hit a truck with a motorbike? Get out rolling. Get out rolling. We're going to be here a while. We'll get this thing out. But, um, I don't know. Let's go again. <laughs> <laughs> and the great thing about these suction caps is that you can put them on your <laughs> ass and just keep hanging them to the seat. <laughs> now, I'll tell you what, Dave. I'll let you blokes think about it. And let me know in a couple of weeks. Righto, mate. See you in a couple of weeks, mate. Cheers. Have you got his phone number? No. No, me neither. How are we going to contact him? Shift to low range. Shift to low range. Action and adventure. Shift to low range. Shift to low range. Action and adventure. Shift to low range.